The presynaptic neuromuscular nerve ending contains membranous vesicles prepared to release its stored neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. Neuronal stimulation initiates a cascade of events that leads to the fusion of the neurotransmitter containing vesicle with a nerve membrane. This process is facilitated by a group of proteins comprising the snare complex. The membrane fusion results in the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft by a process of exocytosis. The acetylcholine diffuses and eventually binds to receptors on the muscle, leading to muscle contraction. Botox, botulinum toxin type A, consists of a heavy chain of 100 kilodalton and a light chain of 50 kilodalton, making up the 150 kilodalton core type A molecule. The toxin is protected by accessory hemagglutinin and non-toxic non-hemagglutinin proteins, yielding a uniform 900 kilodalton complex. This illustration shows a cross-section of the spine with a motor neuron extending into the muscle and a sensory neuron extending out of the muscle. After injection of Botox, it would be expected that most of the neurotoxin would remain at the injection site. The Botox core molecule dissociates from the accessory proteins and targets the nerve endings. The binding domain of the Botox core molecule is the C-terminal portion of the heavy chain with an acceptor on the nerve. The Botox core molecule enters the nerve cell by a process of receptor-mediated endocytosis. It is the heavy chain that contains the binding domain. The toxin is now contained in a membranous vesicle inside the cell. Soon after, the light chain is released into the cytoplasm of the nerve terminal where it begins to cleave one of the snare proteins. In motor neurons, the light chain of the Botox core molecule blocks the release of acetylcholine by cleaving SNAP25, which is an essential component of the snare complex. When acetylcholine cannot be released, muscle contraction cannot occur. In sensory neurons, the light chain is believed to cleave SNAP25 by a similar mechanism, thereby blocking the release of neuropeptide neurotransmitters and inhibiting the sensitization of pain nerves. The toxin does not appear to affect the conduction of electrical signals along the nerve fiber or the synthesis or storage of acetylcholine. Indications, cervical dystonia, Botox is indicated for the treatment of cervical dystonia in adults to decrease the severity of abnormal head position and neck pain associated with cervical dystonia, blepharospasm, and strabismus. Botox is indicated for the treatment of strabismus and blepharospasm associated with dystonia, including benign essential blepharospasm or seventh nerve disorders in patients 12 years of age and above. The efficacy and safety of Botox treatment in deviations over 50 prism diopters in restrictive strabismus, in Duane syndrome with lateral weakness, and in secondary strabismus caused by prior surgical over-recession of the antagonist has not been established. Botox is ineffective in chronic paralytic strabismus, except when used in conjunction with surgical repair to reduce antagonist contracture, hyperhidrosis. Botox is indicated for the treatment of severe primary axillary hyperhidrosis that is inadequately managed with topical agents. Important safety information, contraindications and warnings, contraindications. Botox treatment is contraindicated in the presence of infection at the proposed injection site or sites and in individuals with known hypersensitivity to any ingredient in the formulation. Warnings. The recommended dosage and frequency of administration of Botox should not be exceeded. Risks resulting from administration at higher doses are not known. Serious and or immediate hypersensitivity reactions have been rarely reported. These reactions include anaphylaxis, urticaria, soft tissue edema, and dyspnea. If such a reaction occurs, further Botox injection should be discontinued and appropriate medical therapy immediately instituted. Patients with peripheral motor neuropathic diseases, for example, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis or motor neuropathy, or neuromuscular junctional disorders such as myasthenia gravis or Lambert-Eaton syndrome should only receive Botox treatment with caution. Patients with neuromuscular disorders may be at increased risk of clinically significant systemic effects including severe dysphagia and respiratory compromise from typical Botox doses. Important safety information. Adverse events. General. There have been rare spontaneous reports of death, sometimes associated with dysphagia, pneumonia, and or other significant debility or anaphylaxis after treatment with botulinum toxin. There have been rare reports of adverse events 
events involving the cardiovascular system. Cervical dystonia, the most frequently reported adverse reactions in patients with cervical dystonia following Botox injection are dysphagia, 19%, upper respiratory infection, 12%, neck pain, 11%, and headache, 11%. Blepharospasm, the most frequently reported treatment-related adverse reactions in blepharospasm patients following Botox injection are ptosis, 20.8%, superficial punctate keratitis, 6.3%, and eye dryness, 6.3%. Hyperhidrosis, the most frequently reported adverse events, 3% to 10% of patients following Botox injection were injection site pain and hemorrhage, non-axillary sweating, infection, pharyngitis, flu syndrome, headache, fever, neck or back pain, pruritus, and anxiety. Please refer to full prescribing information. Thank you.